Welcome to Global India, the cultural fusion podcast. We are in the business of building cross-cultural bridges and not walls. And folks, we are not asking Mexico to pay for our bridges either. Hello, I'm your host, Dr. Lily Padman. Welcome to another exciting episode, this time set against the exotic backdrop of Penang, Malaysia, also known as the Pearl of the Orient. Surrounded by water, palm-fringed beaches, and verdant hills, the island of Penang has inspired many writers, including past literary giants like Somerset Maugham and contemporary writers like Jay Shri Srinath, who will be gracing this episode. Thank you, Jay Shri, for joining us on this podcast. We are indeed fortunate to have you with us, and we are looking forward to an exhilarating literary, philosophical, and musical journey. Penang epitomizes cultural fusion at its best, fusion between the East and the West, along with a fusion of three Asian cultures, Chinese, Malay, and Indian. Can you give us a brief historical perspective on this multicultural setting, and also tell us how Penang has influenced your outlook and your writing. As you rightly described, Penang is an island paradise with abundant sunshine, blue skies, and a placid sea. The people who who inhabit this island are warm, friendly, and unassuming. This is a multiracial and multicultural society with Malays, Chinese and Indians living together in harmony for a long time. The unique customs and practices of the different races have helped in weaving a rich tapestry of heritage and culture. Now, India has had connections with Malaysia for more than 2000 years. In fact, Tamil texts of the 11th century mention a place called Kadaram, which is modern day Kada. The Chola and Pallava kings were instrumental in spreading Tamil script and Tamil culture to Malaysia. Tamil traders have had trade connections with this little island for thousands of years and their influence is visible in the spheres of architecture, art, music and of course the food. Indian cuisine has influenced Malaysian food in a big way and you can see evidence of that everywhere in Penang. The Indian Muslim food stalls are so popular in Penang and you are sure to see the huge crowds at the popular mamak shops selling the all-time favorite nasi kandar and roti chanai. The Indian influence is evident in the richly carved and ornate Hindu temples. The temples are beautifully maintained and stand testimony to the secular nature of Penang. Indian festivals like Taipusam and Deepavali are celebrated with much pomp and gusto. Now, since Penang was a British colony, the vestiges of colonialism are evident in the architecture and in the quaint names of the streets. So, we have streets named Jalan Scotland, Jalan York, Jalan McAllister and many more. All these are remnants of the British era and add a quaint charm to the beautiful city of Penang. On the personal front, my stint in Penang has made me more laid back and cheerful. Having lived in cities like Mumbai, Hong Kong and Singapore, which have a more frenetic pace of life, the azure skies and the scintillating scenery of Penang has given me a sense of calmness and tranquility and has been instrumental in helping me pen a novel. Away from the hustle and bustle of big cities, it's been a period of quiet introspection and that introspection has resulted in this novel. Thank you, Jayshree, for that interesting perspective. Let us now delve right into your literary pursuits and garner some interesting nuggets for our listeners. How did you get interested in writing and how did you get trained in writing? I have always been a closet writer and I have a profound love for the written word. I like to pen down my thoughts. And since I read a lot, I always have nuggets of interesting information stored in my head. So I blended these two traits of mine to create an interesting novel. I have no formal training in writing. 
Now I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Though I may be tempted to say that if what you write should ring true, then you shouldn't be trained writer. Rawness can be attractive. Anything which comes straight from the heart can be hard hitting. I agree with you entirely. The fact that you have been a successful writer even without a formal academic background in literature should give at least a glimmer of hope to many aspiring writers. Can you give fledgling writers some tips on how to translate their dreams into reality? As Ernest Hemingway famously said, the only kind of writing is rewriting. Keep writing and keep rewriting. That is the only way. Also be disciplined. Write every day. More important than that, read every day. The more you read, the more you learn. That learning will reflect in your writing. That is fascinating. Thank you, Jay Shri, for your valuable tips. Of course, there is nothing more compelling than an actual example of creative writing that has resulted from your magic recipe. I have read your incredibly engaging novel, Keep My Love Frozen in Time. Can you take us through this novel, starting with the plot and the characters? What are some of the unique features of your novel? And how would you describe your creative process? My novel, Keep My Love Frozen in Time, traces the lives of three women from three different generations who not only share a roof, but also a deep and abiding love for each other. They are confronted with some challenging situations and are forced to make some difficult choices. I think my novel may be one of the very few novels which explores the topic of cryogenic preservation of bodies. It's a family story which tugs at the heartstrings whilst exploring the concept of cryogenic preservation of humans. It explores the pros and cons of such decisions. As I mentioned earlier, I had this information about cryogenic preservation stored in my ha head. So I set about to write a novel based on this topic. I did a detailed character mapping and decided on the milieu, the setting, the lingo and the ethos of that particular family. Slowly but surely, the mood and the setting of the novel bega began to take shape. I was very clear that my characters would be as real as possible so that people would instantly connect with them. I think I've succeeded in that since most people mention that they could identify with the characters. Thank you, Jay Shree, for sharing with us the highlights of your literary slash philosophical journey. It's clear that your accomplishments are at least partly attributable to your rigorous sense of discipline. Can you share with us some of the techniques that have helped to instill this sense of discipline in you? Well, I'm a stickler for routine. Routine has given a semblance of order in my life. I exercise every single day. I practice yoga regularly. I never miss any yoga sessions unless I'm traveling and the thought of missing practice fills me with remorse. I approach my novel also with the same sense of discipline. What are some of your other creative outlets? I love Carnatic music and spend a lot of time listening to the maestros of Carnatic music. I've had an opportunity to continue learning music at the Temple of Fine Arts in Penang. And I consider it a blessing that we have such an organization in Penang which encourages Indian classical music and dance. I'm also an avid potter and have a huge collection of pottery made by me at my home. Well. All these are just my small attempts at leading a meaningful life. After all, you only live once. After being exposed to your colorful persona, I'm sure our listeners are eager to listen to your music. And so here is Jay Shri singing a devotional song in Carnatic style. Mamavato Shri Saraswati Mamavato Shri Saraswati 
काम कोटि पेट निपासे ने अंब मवतोषे सरस्वती काम कोटि पेट निवासे ने अंब मवतो श्री सरस्वती कोमल दर सरोज धृतवीणा कोमल दर सरोज धृतवीणा सिंहतीर्थवर विभूषणी को मल दर सरोज धृतवीणा सिंहतीर्थवर विभूषणी सास निदम दम गम सास म ग दम निदस नि समग सग नि स निदस नि सदनी रि स निधनी मद गमदनी समग मवतो श्री सरस्वती काम कोटि पे निवासी अंब मवतो श्री सरस्वती थैंक यू जय श्री फॉर दैट ब्यूटिफुल सॉन्ग थैंक यू ऑल्सो फॉर ए वेरी इंस्पायरिंग एंड इंफॉर्मेटिव सेशन thank you lily for inviting me to participate in the global india podcast i'm really honored honored and privileged to feature in it thanks again in keeping with our theme of cultural fusion here is a peppy bollywood song from the movie zindagi na milegi dobara which means you only live once Eres tú donde has estado He removido cielo y tierra y no te encontré Y llegas hoy tan de repente Y da sentido a toda mi vida con tu querer Na me samjha Na me jana Yo vi tu me mujhse kaha hai señorita Magar phir bhi na jaane kyun मुझे सुन के अच्छा लगा है सेनियोरिका नो दे तुम घेरो समझी ना सेनियोरिता चाहत के दो पल भी मिल पाए दुनिया में ये भी कम है दो पल को तो आओ Más podré interpretar el sentido de las palabras que me dedicas, pero el calor de tu mirar me hace sentir como la más bella señorita. Me da un, me da un sí. Que mi hermano te da su tarde, señorita. Y cada día, mi amor y mi सारी दुनिया में एक ही जुबा है सेनियोरिता मुझसे अब नजर ना फेरो आओ पास तुम मेरे मुझको बाहों में तुम घेरो समझी ना सेनियोरिता चाहत के दो पल भी मिल पाए दुनिया में ये भी कम है क्या दो पल को तो आओ Señorita, señorita, 
हर पल तुमने है दिल जीता बस इतनी सी दो बात है नो मीरा Quédate cerca de mí Mucho bajo me tumbero Samadina señorita Chahat ke to par bhi dilwaye Duniya pe bhi tab hai kya Ko par ko to aao kho jaye Dunia hai to hai kya Chahat ke to conclude this episode with a spoof on cultural fusion flashy silk and gold embroidered outfits fit for royalty are acceptable garb for bollywood actors but may not be exactly appropriate for visiting dignitaries regardless justin trudeau the prime minister of canada went out of his way to blend into the indian milieu by wearing ornate Bollywood type clothing during his visit to India in a meeting with Bollywood stars Trudeau wore an elaborate sherwani more in line with what a bride groom would wear in a Bollywood movie while ironically enough Bollywood stars around him wore sober black suits perhaps Trudeau was carrying cultural fusion a bit too far or perhaps trudeau has a winning strategy for international diplomacy that other world leaders like trump might want to emulate to our listeners in malaysia and around the globe a big thank you for listening to the global india podcast hope you have enjoyed this episode and are getting geared up to embark on your own mission to fulfill your dreams This is a free podcast. However, if you enjoy the podcast to the point where it puts you in a generous mood, you can unleash your generosity by donating to the Lions Club of Bangalore Whitefield. Please check out their website. Please write checks payable to Whitefield Lions Club Services Trust out of your Indian bank accounts and send them to Global India 7612. Fenwick Cove Lane Orlando Florida 32819 For more details please visit our website www.globalindiapodcast.com Please email your feedback and ideas for future episodes to globalindiapodcast@gmail.com We would love to showcase your talents and accomplishments as well All you have to do is to email us a note along with your bio data and a recording of your music. Alvida, adios, au revoir, and goodbye for now.